you have it. The most powerful rocket ever built has lifted off from a Texas air base. It is the 10th test flight for SpaceX Starship rocket. It's underway right now, and so far it looks like it's a success. Let's bring in CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood live from the Kennedy Space Center for us. Bill, the launch itself was a big win. What else was SpaceX looking for with this particular test? Well, you know, so far they've ticked off just about every one of their objectives. You know, a big goal here was to get the Starship, that's the upper part of the rocket, the one that looks a little bit like this, our model, um, to get that all the way up into space on the proper trajectory. The last three flights they tried this on, they couldn't do that. They either went out of control or had an explosion or things like that. This time, uh, the engines worked great. The ship got where it was supposed to be. They test launched some uh, Starlink simulator satellites because they're going to use this rocket to launch Starlinks down the road when it becomes operational. That went off without a hitch. They restarted one of the engines in the, in the rocket in space, which is something they'll have to do when they want to drop out of orbit in the future. All of that's gone almost flawlessly. So the next things up are to re-enter the atmosphere uh, and to splash down in the Indian Ocean. And of course, that's, that's a challenge because of re-entry heating, and we'll have to wait and see how that goes. But so far, so good. That is good news. And a few moments ago, we heard a lot of applause, and we want to listen to that moment. And you can tell us a little bit about what it was all about. Yeah, there you go. One remaining. So seven of the eight have been deployed. One more to go. And then we will have completed our first ever payload deploy operation. Just a reminder, we're on a suborbital trajectory. These satellites on that exact same suborbital trajectory, they're going to burn up uh, entirely they're on that same trajectory towards the Indian Ocean. So the last one has been deployed. Starlink simulator payload complete. Heck yeah, everybody. Heck yeah, everybody. A lot of applause there, Bill. A little bit difficult to see because the video broke up a little bit there, but can you tell us what that applause was all about and the significance of that particular moment? Well, absolutely. You know, they're going to use the Starship when it's operational to launch another generation of Starlink Internet satellites, and I mean launch a lot of them. And they've designed this Pez-like dispenser. If you remember the old Pez candy dispensers? Oh, yeah. There's a slot on the side of the Starship where they come shooting out just like candies from a Pez dispenser. <laughs> they tried to test that on an earlier flight and it didn't work. This time it did. They all went out by the book and so that's why they were cheering. They achieved something they hadn't achieved before. A lot of success. Now they have a lofty goal of getting astronauts back in space and back on the moon. Do you think this is inching them closer to that goal? Do you think they'll make it? You know, any one flight doesn't, doesn't do that. You know, they're mm -hmm. going to have to launch literally dozens and dozens of these rockets to perfect the technology and develop the reliability before NASA's going to put an astronaut on board. They have to refuel that moon lander something like 10 to 20 times with these launches just to get to the moon. It's a hugely challenging proposition. The moon landing is targeted for 2027, and very few people think they can achieve that regardless of the results of today's test. All right, Bill Harwood, thank you so much.